Nice and hot. Whoa. Good morning, everyone. Today we have a service call for no heat. They haven't had heat in four days, but they just decided to call now and they're threatening to call the town. Well, that's not gonna work. First piece of advice for this video, know exactly how you are gonna get in to the basement or to wherever before you get there and realize everything is locked and no one's around to open for you. I'm in no union, but I think this calls for a coffee break. Ow! Well, that one got canceled, so we're on to the next. Who remembers this basement from the short? So it is this boiler. Okay, I was wrong. It wasn't that boiler. It's this boiler over here. All right, so we jumped out the thermostat. We're calling, we're good. Hot on our supply, but cool. As we work our way up the return, I think we're airbound. All right, so we're gonna do a quick purge to get all this air out of the baseboard. So first thing we're gonna do is gonna connect our hose, power off, close our isolation valve. Now what's gonna happen is water's gonna feed in, try to go up, but it can't go anywhere. So instead it's gotta go down, go through the boiler, up the supply, up the pecs, down the pecs to our drain and drain its way out. That's how we're gonna push all the air out. In the meantime, this cup of coffee came in handy. I want to show you how this works. We're going to slowly crack open our drain and we're going to watch. The only reason I'm doing it like this is because this floor is dirty and disgusting and the water's going to drain down there anyway. Okay, so you see the water draining and then look at that. This is a great way to watch and see that there is actually air in the line by putting the hose in a cup of water or in a five gallon bucket like it should be, but you know, I wasn't prepared today. Uh, you get a chance to see all the air bubbles come out. Now, we could speed this up a little bit by manually feeding it. That is a lot of air. Oh my God. And now we don't want to let the pressure get too high, but at the same time, we don't want the system to pull completely down with no pressure because then water's not going to be able to make its way around the loop. This pipe is cold because we have cold water coming in from the reducing valve. And now I start to feel it cooling off on the supply. So honestly, I'm just gonna wait until I feel it coming out cool out of our return. And then at least this way, I know that cold water has made it all the way from this point down through the boiler up and back to here. And that's when we're gonna kick it on and we'll make sure that our thermostat works, that it's calling for heat and it heats up the boiler. You know what? We're gonna stop this for a sec. I just have a feeling that this float vent is not good. So this, I'm gonna close the feed valve, drain it on a little bit to take some pressure off. And we're gonna change this baby on the fly really fast. This is why I always keep one on me for situations like this. Back up. Open it. Get all the air out all over again. Yeah, that's cold. You should also be able to hear it too. You'll hear all the, the air in the line. Yeah, and then it's just a balancing act. Oh. Cut that open. We got our valve is closed. We're gonna open our isolation valve. Feed valve is open, our pressure is stabilized, but we'll never be able to tell that. Flip the power on and wait for a call for heat. Thermostat's calling. We're gonna sit here and watch it and make sure that we're circulating heat and we might have to purge out a little bit more air, but you know, now with the new float vent on there, I think we should be okay. The most important thing when purging air out of a baseboard loop 
is isolation. You, you want to make sure that the water is going in the direction you want it to go. But the second most important thing is making sure that there's always positive pressure on the system. I don't mean just, you know, there's one pound of pressure on the boiler. We want enough pressure that the water is going to be able to make its way all the way up to the baseboard and come back down. My preferred method is to use the manual feed on the reducing valve and start to increase the pressure. Let the pressure start to build up, open the drain, it's gonna drain out. As it drains out, you see the pressure start coming back down, you close it a little bit, pressure will start to increase. Do the same thing over and over again until you feel comfortable that you got all the air out. And then run the boiler and see how it does. Either jump it out, put the thermostat on, set to, you know, doesn't matter, whatever gets a call for heat, watch it, make sure that the boiler comes up to temperature, make sure that the heat is fully circulated through the line. And if it does that, then you're good to go. Looks like we're gonna be pretty good on this one. I mean, boiler is still coming up on maybe 110 and it's been running for, I don't know, a couple minutes now, but I feel it's starting to warm up on the return. Um, that's always a good sign. If, if you notice that the supply temperature hits whatever you, the set point is, in this case it's 180. If it hits the set point in like a minute or two, then you know only the water in the boiler and in this area is being warmed up. It's not going all the way up and coming back down. The fact that it's taking its time to heat up means that we have good circulation, you know, water, warm water's going up, cooler water is coming down. We're circulating and heating properly. Good thing I stopped and got that cup of coffee or I wouldn't have been able to purge out the line. Just kidding. I wouldn't have been able to see the bubblies come out. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next.